brothers, sisters, and friends, I stand before you in humbleness of mind and thanksgiving to the Most High God, whose holy name is Jehovah, and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, for this unique privilege given to me to perform this duty. And so I'm most grateful to God and to the acting president, as well as other members of the executive board for this privilege. My duty here is to do a review of feast activities. In obedience to the Lord's command, in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 to 19, and following the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the book of John chapter 7, verse 1 to 38, the God's Kingdom Society commenced the celebration of the Christian Feast of Tabernacles on Sunday, December 12, 2021. On that very day, at 10 a.m., all members from the four zones in Wari Metropolis and members in neighboring branches converged at the GKS Grandstand in Salem City. The acting president of the church officially declared the 2021 Feast of Tabernacles open with a prayer and thereafter read his address. After the address, the members from the four zones in Wari Metropolis and those from neighboring branches presented gifts to the Lord's ministry. When that was done, at 5 p.m., all members converged at the new service hall, the main venue for the feast celebration. Two Bible lectures were treated on that day. They are one of what relevance is the Feast of Tabernacles to mankind in this age by Brother Andrew I. Okocha, Minister, GKS. Brother Andrew Okocha told us that in this age of political, commercial, and religious unrest, that the Feast of Tabernacles is of great relevance to mankind. He read the ordinance in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 33 to 43. Why that text was being read, he reminded us that we do not need to make animal sacrifices while celebrating the feast in this age. And that in doing the feast in this age, we should not come empty-handed. He also said that we follow the spirit of the law. Then coming to the relevance of the Feast of Tabernacles in this age, Brother Okocha made reference to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 to 19, where God gave the command that in these last days, everyone should celebrate the feast. He told us that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master, celebrated it as an example for us to follow. He then made us to understand that we are spiritual Jews. And he also said that Jesus Christ is the antitypical tabernacle now dwelling amongst men. Brother Okocha went back to Zechariah 14, 16 to 19, and brought out the expression, all families of the earth who are expected to celebrate the feast in this age. Then he concluded by telling us that in celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, we should do it with sincerity and in honesty. And this, if we do, the blessings of God, symbolized by rain, will be our Lord by the grace of God. The second sermon for that day was entitled, The New Jerusalem, by Brother Joshua N. W. Chukwudi, member, executive board, GKS. Brother Chukwudi told us, that the term New Jerusalem 
presupposes that there is a former, an old, or a Jerusalem that was before. And that before he could go into the new Jerusalem, there was need to tell the audience, the members, a little about the old or previous Jerusalem. Then he said that Jerusalem was the capital of Palestine, a center of attraction, not because of its beauty or its geographical location, but because the name of God was called upon that city, Jerusalem. But a J.N.W. Chukwode then told us that Jerusalem was originally called Jebus, occupied by the Jebusites, until David the king conquered that city, and it was called the city of David. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. Later, according to him, Jerusalem was conquered by Babylon. Alexander Great also conquered Babylon, conquered Jerusalem rather. Then the Romans conquered Jerusalem. Why the Romans dominated Jerusalem, Jesus Christ was born. And Christ foretold the desolation and destruction of Jerusalem. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 37 to 39. And Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Where Christ spoke of the fall of Jerusalem. Then he told us that that prophecy fulfilled in the year A.D. 70. When General Titus marched into Jerusalem, the city was sacked. The Jews were mercilessly massacred. And many of them went into diaspora. Until May 14, 1948, then the modern state of Israel was reborn. This in brief, but Atukodi said about the old Jerusalem. Then coming to the new Jerusalem, he then told us that God has promised to set up a new Jerusalem where all his faithful worshippers will be blessed in perfect peace and happiness by his grace. Isaiah 65, 17 to 19, was quickly made reference to. Where the Bible says, Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. Brother Chukudi went into Bible symbolism by making reference to the account in Galatians chapter 4 from verse 22 up to verse 31 where reference was made to the two sons of Abraham Isaac from Sarah the free woman and Ishmael from Hagar the bond woman this he said was an allegory which pointed to the facts that the old Jerusalem was already in bondage. But the new Jerusalem, symbolic of Sarah, the free woman, is free. And it is the mother of us all. He then spoke of the beauties, the glories of the new Jerusalem. But he warned that nothing defied shall enter into the new Jerusalem. When he cited or made reference to Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, then he ended his talk. The next day, day two, Monday, December 13, 2021, we all converged at the new service hall for two Bible lectures. The first was, if God is not a person, how is man the image of God? By Brother Okwotu Kingsley Riferi, Station Minister, GKS Abazon. Brother Riferi told us, that some people believe that God has no shape or form. And they often make reference to Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 23 and verse 24. And John chapter 4, verse 24. After explaining this Bible text, he then told us that we should not think that God is like auto silver or gold or an axe graven by man. He went further to talk about the facts of the scriptures that God is a person, a spirit person for that matter. He was able to differentiate 
two kinds of bodies. The spiritual body and the natural body. The celestial body and the terrestrial body. Then he went to the visions of the almighty God shown to the prophets in time of old. That of Micaiah the prophets in 2 Chronicles 18.18. 18. That of Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. Then he told us that God is a man of war. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. He even made reference to the Lord's prayer that God was referred to as our father. Then concluding he now said that even though that God is a person. Going by Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, where God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. It follows that since man, who was made in the image and likeness of God, is a person, God is a person. But not an ordinary person. But a spirit personality of the highest order. Having no blood, flesh, bones. He does not sleep nor slumber. And he lives from everlasting to everlasting. Day two, Monday, the second sermon was the purpose of the second presence of Jesus Christ. By Brother Theophilus T.E. War, Station Minister, GKS Portacot Zone. Brother T.E. War told us that the work of restoration which God has assigned to his son Jesus Christ to do Upon it hinges the purpose of the second presence of Christ. This he referred to as the times of refreshing, making reference to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. Then he gave a catalog of the events scheduled by the Almighty Father for Jesus Christ to execute in this age of his second presence. But he also told us that the second presence of Christ is spiritual. That we don't need to see Christ physically. And that when he comes, it is only the apostles that we see him. John chapter 14, verse 19 and verse 22. Then he started with events in the purpose of Christ's second coming. Beginning with the resurrection of the dead saints. The apostles of Christ, who had lived and died before the second presence of Jesus Christ, they are the first to be rewarded. Thereafter, the selection of the remnants. These are those that God will use to preach the message of the kingdom. By it, God's kingdom will not be set up in this world. Then such persons, as soon as they die, they go to heaven, they are changed to spirits. Then we also have the judgment walk, the separation of the sheep and the goats, the gathering of God's people into the kingdom fold, then the destruction of Satan the devil, which will now be followed with the 1,000 years reign of Jesus Christ. During this period, there will be the general resurrection, the reconstruction of the earth. Then after all of these, Satan will be brought back to life. But he will not repent, but try to deceive. Then the anger of God will devour him. Then shall be ushered in the full establishment of the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ, as an obedient son, will hand over to God, so that in the words of Apostle Paul, God may be all in all. But that city will concluded. On day three, Tuesday, December 14, we assembled again. And the subjects were one. Who is the head of the church? By brother progress, O Ayikimi, Station Minister, GKS Lagos Zone. But Ayikimi told us that it is believed that Peter is the head of the apostles, the chief of the apostles, and the head of the church. He went further to make reference to question 88 in the Catechism of Christian Doctrine. Then he told us that this Erroneous belief is taken from the statement of Christ to Apostle Peter when he asked them a question as to what people say about him. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 to 18. When Apostle Peter gave the right answer by saying, 
Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus Christ told him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock Christ was now pointing to himself, I will build my church. Remember that Peter made a confession that Jesus is the Son of the living God. So Christ said, Upon that confession you have made, which is the rock, I will build my church. He then quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, to show that Jesus Christ is the rock. He also told us that when there was rivalry among the apostles as to who will be their leader, Jesus Christ warned them. And he told them that whosoever will be their leader, let him be their servant or minister. That Christ never made Peter the head of the apostles. Then to hit the nail on the head, he made reference to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 18, where it is recorded that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. But the progress are you giving me in his usual manner and style of presentation, then concluded by saying that the honor, the privilege, the status, Given to Jesus Christ by God as the head of the church should not be given to anybody. Next was the sermon, Rapture as Seen Through the Holy Bible. By Brother Patrick O. Ekirego, Station Minister, GKS Wari Uwe, and Udu Slash Ujenwe Zones. But Ekirego painted the artistic impression of what people believe about rapture. And that predictions have been made by some persons. 1988, 1989, year 2000, then Sir Isaac Newton, a philosopher and mathematician, also predicted 2060. After telling us all of this, he told us that for the fact that the word rapture is not in the Bible, it is a technical knockout for that doctrine, to use his words. He also said that it was based on a false understanding, on a wrong understanding of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17, which he thoroughly explained that it has to do with the reward of the apostles, those who are called and selected and set apart to be taken to heaven to rule and reign with Jesus Christ as kings and priests. He also told us that no woman is going to heaven as the doctrine of rapture asserts. And that all the faithful will not be blessed in heaven. Rather, heaven is for the apostles only. And the rest of God's worshippers, the meek, will be blessed with everlasting life here on earth. Concluding, he said that the doctrine of rapture is false, spurious, dangerous and confusing and should be rejected by all true worshippers of God. Then the next day, Wednesday, which is the day 4, December 15, 2021, at 5 p.m., members again converged here in the new service hall. The first sermon for that day was, The Great Day of the Lord is Near, by Brother Benedict T. Hartz, Publicity Secretary and Member, Executive Board, GKS. But the heart told us that the sermon is drawn from Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. He made reference to some parallel texts that talk about the great day of the Lord, like Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, Matthew 24, 21, Amos chapter 9 from verse 1, just to mention but these. But I had then said that when God destroyed the first world, it was only living beings, things that had the breath of life in them that were killed. But in this battle, both spirits would be destroyed. The book of Revelation chapter 16, verse 13, 14, and 16 was cited, read, and explained. Then he told us that that battle is known as the battle of the great day of God Almighty, otherwise called the battle of Armageddon. 
And Macedon, he explained to mean the Mount of Megiddo, which was significant for battles in those days. That it was a type of what God will do in a greater measure when he will wreak vengeance upon Satan the devil and all workers of iniquity. But the heart then told us of the facts of the scriptures that there is going to be a great tribulation which will precede the battle of the great day of God Almighty. And that in that great tribulation, the wicked shall not escape. Some will even go to a mountain, say, mountain, fall on top of us. To show how severe it will be for the wicked before they will be finally killed and destroyed by God. Then he admonished us with the ways of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 21, verse 34 to, 30, 34 to 36, that we should watch and pray. Before he concluded with Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. We also heard the sermon on that same day, day four. Is it by words or multitude of worshippers that one determines godliness and true faith? By Brother Abraham A. Era, member, executive board, GKS. Brother Era started by making reference to the account of Matthew chapter 7, from verse 13 right down to 27. Do a long piece, but very interesting. There he clearly distinguished the fact of the scriptures that those in the multitude are those in the broad way. And that it is not a standard or a yastic to identify or determine godliness or the true faith. The fact of the scriptures remain that God does not walk with multitude. Reference was made to the fact that false prophets are the ones who are used by the devil to set up false faiths where there is no godliness, known as the broad way in the account, Matthew 7, 13 to 27. The Bible speaks about them in Jeremiah chapter 5 from verse 27 that they are that as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceits. They wasn't fat. They wasn't rich. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause of the fatherless. And the right of the needy, do they not judge? Then in the account of 2 Peter chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible tells us that there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privilege are bringing damnable heresies? Even denying the Lord that bought them. Then the Bible says, And many, that's the multitude, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. Through whom, or by reason of which, the way of truth, the narrow way, the straight gate will be evil spoken of. Then they will make merchandise of the people. So the Bible warns that it's not by wealth or multitude of worshippers that the true faith and godliness can be identified. Then come into the facts that we we'll use to identify godliness and true faith, the truth was highlighted. The truth was highlighted. Citing Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, and John chapter 8, verse 31, 32, and 36. Then there is the love of God. The preaching and practice of the love of God. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Then there is judgment. To determine godliness and true faith, there must be judgment. Because God is a God of judgment. Psalm 89, verse 14. Then also, there must be spirituality and spiritual growth. Going by 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Of course, such true faith must be founded by the servant of God, the remnant. And by the grace of God, we are privileged to have such remnant in the person of St. Gideon, Melodere Urobu, the vessel of honor used by God to found the God's kingdom society, the church of the living God. So the GKS is the way of godliness. It is the true faith. Those of us in the GKS, we should remain 
and serve God, Brother Era concluded. On day five, Thursday, December 16, 2021, we had two Bible lectures again at 5 p.m. The first, while worshippers of God should always pray and wait on God, by Brother Chik Ayonuneku, Chairman, Administrative Committee, GKS Umaya Branch. Brother Chika highlighted examples from the Holy Bible. He spoke about Abraham, he spoke about Hezekiah, he spoke about David, then the woman Hannah. When he came to the New Testament, he spoke about Apostle Peter, who was imprisoned, but the church prayed and God saved him. He also made reference to Paul and Silas. Then he told us of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how he warned us, how he admonished us to always pray and not to faint. Concluding, he cited Romans chapter 12, verse 12, which says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayers. Then came the second sermon for that day. As Christians, we must examine ourselves always by Brother Olufemi D. Akinwale, member, executive board, GKS. Brother O.D. Akinwale, first of all, defined the word Christian. That a Christian is a follower of Christ. To use this term, Christ-like. Therefore, as followers of Christ, or those who are said to be Christ-like, we must examine ourselves constantly. Just as we check upon our bodies and our businesses. That the need for us to do this cannot be overemphasized. He highlighted the evils, vices, iniquities, or sins committed by men today. Making reference to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Then he told us that our sins are multiplied before us, that we know them. For this reason, God will not answer anyone that is a sinner. He made reference to John chapter 9, verse 31. He then told us that God is giving opportunity for people to repent. When he cited 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And admonished us to constantly check ourselves. When he made reference to that 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Where the Bible says, examine yourselves. Then, on the day 6, Friday, December 17, 2021, there was the Christian Women Assembly where two sermons or Bible subjects were treated. One, what it means to be a spiritual Jewess by Sister Naomi Rigrewetta GKS Human Fellowship Zona Representative, Sapless Zone. She told the sisters that a spiritual Jewess is one who is truly converted and spiritually circumcised. She highlighted virtuous women of the Bible like Sarah, Elizabeth, Phoebe, Naomi, Esther, just to mention but these. Then he told the sisters to love and respect their husbands, to be prayerful, and also to be thankful before she concluded on that sermon. Then we also took the second sermon for that day, Marriage, a Sacred Institution, by Sister Fumilayo Ali, Chairperson, Sisters Committee of the Lost Ministry, GKS. Sister Ali warned and told sisters to understand what marriage is all about and to follow the rules or the laws of God concerning marriage. She admonished and warned against lesbianism, homosexuality, bisexuals, and transgender. Then the sisters were admonished to respect their husbands and also submit to their husbands so that by the grace of God, marriage, which is honorable, will bring blessings to them. 
On the evening of that day, there was the Christian Music Festival, where seven groups, musical groups, performed to the glory of God. We had the so-called orchestra of GKS, Isoko Zone. We had the Edo Choral Group, GKS Bini City. Yoruba Choral Group, GKS Adoekiti Zone. Bomanume Orchestra, GKS River State Branches. Ishekiri Choral Group, GKS Wari. Sulagogo Choral Group, GKS Wari. And the Chidebere Orchestra of GKS Wari. These were the groups that performed during the music festival by the grace of God. And we closed that day successfully. Today, Saturday, December 18, 2021, in the morning, we had the Sisters Crowa presentation, where the sisters did a procession within Salem City. They read the address and presented their gifts to the Lord's ministry. Then other members from different branches of the church, both within and without, Nigeria and abroad, also presented their gifts until that program came to an end. And here we are gathered for the evening lectures by the grace of God until it was time for me to come and give this review. Brothers, sisters, and friends, with this I come to the end of the review of feast activities for this year, 2021. I thank you very much for your attention. Happy Feast of Tabernacles 